Hey guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I've got a little video for you on Grain, one of the, probably the best new feature in Reason 10. And this is sort of going to be a high-level overview of Grain to get you started if you're new to Reason 10, um, or new to Reason in general. Um, I am still definitely trying to figure this out, but this is what I've figured out so far, and this is how I've figured it out. And so I want to give you those tools, teach you to fish, so that you can experiment with grain and figure out more things. And also just stay tuned because there definitely will be more lessons on grain coming up in much more depth. But what we're going to cover today is first, just a high level overview of what's going on in grain. Second, we're going to cover um, when and where I would reach for grain and why. And then finally, um, I think we're going to look into sort of how grain fits into reason um, with a little riff on why I hope that grain is the future of reason. All right, so let's jump in. Um, so the first and best place to start to look for uh, how to get better at grain uh, is actually just to hit the tab key, flip it around, and you've got a diagram of how it works. So you've got the grain engine and the oscillator both here at the beginning, and they can either go directly into the filter or they can bypass the filter and go to the amp stage, where from there um, they combine and go into the multi-effects section. And then you've got some CV outs and uh, some CV ins, some sequencer controls. So what does that mean? Well, here's your grain section, here's your oscillator, here's the filter, and here's the amplifier, and then down here is the effects section. So, and then here you've got the modulation parts, um, and here you sort of have the performance side of things. So, at its heart, what uh, grain does is basically manipulate samples, and your sample is right here at the top. You can hit this arrow to play the sample and see what it sounds like. But if you hold down the key, this is what it's going to sound like. And you can drag any sound you want, any wave file sound uh, you want in there. So let's go to, just to show you, um, if I go to like my refills and uh, let's just do, I don't even know, Jazz Addict, sure. Nope, okay, I lied. Jazz Addict. Let's see about these. Nope, I'm a total liar and should have prepared this beforehand. Um, all right, I think these are a lot of... Nope, okay. Uh, my sample library is not well organized at the moment. Um, so, my apologies. Um, Jazztronica. Brave. Okay. No, why are you doing me like this? Ah, yep. Yeah. So you have to click... Sorry, you have to click on the actual sample browser as opposed to the patch browser. Note to self and to you. Um, all right. I, I should not do a bass just so you can hear it a little easier if you're not on headphones. Perfect. Okay, so now what we've done is we're using all the same settings on the sampler, but we're manipulating a different sample. So uh, let's turn off the oscillator section, because as we looked, we noticed here, you've got your grain engine and your oscillator, and they roll on separate uh, paths. So we can actually zoom out on what part of the sample we're affecting right here. And actually, let's just go and make the sample, the oscillator, not the oscillator, the grain engine, work on the fat part of the sample. And so the green arrow is the front, and the E is the end of the sample. So you can make it really short here. Um, and you can affect the motion of it um, which envelope here is actually this envelope. You can draw in how fast or slow in which direction it goes. But let's just do 
one shot. These will be familiar with you if you're if you use samples. Um, basically, it'll freeze at the end. It does a one shot. It'll go forward and keep looping. It'll go forwards and backwards and make a loop, or it'll get to the end and it'll freeze. But we'll just do one shot for now. And you hear it ends when we get to the end there. So then this speed controls basically how quickly it goes through. Um, and that can be globally based or not. And the jitter controls like if it goes perfectly sequentially or if it jitters. It's a little fast to hear it, but um, if we slow it down and crank it up, you'll hear. We need a longer sample. You, you can almost see that arrow bouncing around like that, right? So that's the jitter there. Um, or it would just be. Uh, also, you want to analyze and set it so that the key, it detects the key of the sample and then maps it better. So, so that's the grain, that's one of the grain engines. Tape is the most like a regular sample. And here you can control other parts of it, all the way to spectral grains, which is totally out there and weird, and I don't pretend to be able to tell you exactly how to do anything with it yet. But that's what patches are for. And this controls the octave, the pitch, how much it tracks. And then we can turn on the oscillator, which creates an underlying fundamental. You probably can't hear necessarily the bass coming in there, um, but let's let's see. So basically, you get a whole other sound engine underneath, and together you combine them, um, and you get a really good sound. And then you can have them either go to a filter or go directly to the amp engine, the ADSR curve. So if you want it to be more of a lead um, on the ADSR, you know. But if you want it to be more pad-like, you could pull up the attack and increase the decay and sustain and release. And goes to the effects section, um, which you can either turn on or off, um, or individually. Um, and you can turn on the individual effects and drag them around and reorder them. Um, and you've got multiple engines even within each um, effect, so distortion. You've got all sorts of different types. Uh, you got delay. You got all the things you need. Here are the various matrices, um, and then performance mode. So. That there is the overview of sort of <laughs> this sampler. Um, and actually, let's talk about one other cool thing. Well, uh, first I'll make a quick pitch. Uh, I just started a Patreon channel. There's a link down below. Um, and basically, that's to help encourage better quality videos. Um, what I want to do is raise enough so that I can actually hire a professional editor to put these videos together cut out all this blank space, make them move a little faster and snappier. I don't have the time or the digital skill or the software to actually do that. Um, and so in exchange for that, what I want to do is put out special videos only for Patreon members and then also like project files you can work on and all sorts of other, I don't know, samples and fun stuff. So go check out that page. If you've enjoyed this sign up, it would really mean a lot. And I think everybody will get a lot out of it. So. One thing I want to, here we've got this, the chilled roads here. Um, you've got the voices, which is the maximum number of notes that can be played at once. And if we go into re-trigger mode and maybe turn on tape. Almost knocked over my coffee there. You get these really kind of uh, cool sounds because it can only play one sample at a time. So I think that's something else to experiment. 
Well, let's turn off these effects, because we're not going to be zooming through outer space just yet. Whereas, um, it, if we're in multi-mode, multi-note mode, um, I just miss out on that. So when would I use grain? And this is an important, really important thing to talk about. For paths and for textures and all sorts of things like that, it's probably the best synth out there. Something you can literally build songs around. Whether you need some background for some rock music, some IDM breakdowns for EDM, um, a lot of cool hip hop stuff actually. If you um, put in, you know, you go with a, let's see, there was, there was one I was messing around with earlier. Um, where basically I just imported my own sample, but I don't, you know. Yeah, I, so if you experiment with like some of these and then you drop in your own samples, let's just, I'll show you an example of what you could do here. Now that I, no, did I click this? Yes. Okay, so um, let's just go. grains um, so basically if you experiment with this um, you can get some of your favorite samples or some of your songs to actually really be remixed and popping and just a lot of fun creative song starting ideas by dropping your own samples into some of these presets um, now the thing I want to say about grain, it's also, there's some really good bass sounds, but I still haven't totally, uh, been sold on that as my go-to place for basses, um, or for leads, really. Some of the plucks are pretty great. Um, they just sort of do weirder things than you would expect from a sample, or from a sample straight sample player or from a straight synth um and if you're not listening on hair headphones there's some little textures there that you might be missing but um the thing about it is that a lot of these sounds are really big a lot of texture and a lot of movement um and a lot of color and if you stack if you start stacking four or five grains uh in one song in the same spot, uh, they start losing a lot of their definition, which is not to say they're a bad thing. It's just when it comes to song choice and sound choice, I think you have to be really judicious in your use of grain and Europa because they are both so harmonically rich that you're gonna start getting these overlaps and what you're trying to do is gonna get buried and you're gonna have to get a lot better at EQ and compression and stereo separation. and. <laughs> Like, um, so I'm trying to just one sec. I know it's, is it? Maybe it's this one. Yes, okay, so this is what I was looking for before. I would totally recommend going into some of the rhythmic ones, dropping in. Well, we'll just do some free loops by output, because why not? Um, okay. Nope, of course, I didn't click the right thing, as always. Um, <laughs> all right. experiment really I think the main point is just experiment with grain um, it's wonderful and I love it because I still don't know exactly how to use it but half the time I use it I come up with something amazing um, and my biggest piece of advice is just walk away from it when you've got what you need or when you're not getting what you need go on to something else and come back because um, I feel like there's a lot of dumb luck with grain 
And if you just keep on constantly trying to make things out of dumb luck, you can get frustrated. So uh, just enjoy the process of making music and don't be afraid to walk away. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, like I said, check out the Patreon channel. We're going to be doing a lot of great Reason 10 content, a lot of great songwriting content on there, um, and also just a lot of great music production tips.